I've gotten so many different blood panels done to see blood work all across the board, to really see everything going on. Never really focus on, on, on the brain because most blood tests are not gonna be focused on that primarily. So when I had heard about this brain scan, it was, it was great. I thought it was, you're really seeing underneath the hood and I figured that was something that I had not thought of before and I thought it'd be very cool to see. So Corey, awesome to, awesome to connect with you. It was well. part of what you're doing. I think it's health coaching. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Tell, tell us more about that. Um, you know, I, I just kind of like to use all the information out there health-wise to give you the best tools so that every day you can make better choices, whether that be eating, lifestyle, you know, any habits that you're trying to better. So that's, that's kind of my main goal, to so just bring awareness, education, so that you can then make the best choice for you. So some of your work is linked with our work. We were big, you know, um, fans of, of, yeah, lifestyle. Yeah. Kind of not just here, here's that pill and here feel better. I want to hear what your hopes, your expectations are from this process. I'm hoping to get a better in-depth look at my brain and anything else that's going on. I've gotten so much blood work done, so many blood panels for all different things just to really see what's going on so I don't have to guess. All different, you know, uh, basically markers for inflammation and nutrient deficiencies, everything you could imagine pretty much, just trying to get all the education I can. So when I heard about this test from you guys, I thought it was so different and I kind of wanted to see what exactly I might be missing because I might not have symptoms for something that is wrong and I just kind of want to not have to guess and see uh, an actual test that gives me some good data. Okay, and um, you know, we take a history, I reviewed your history and it seems like you're doing pretty well from a mental health perspective. Yeah, there's really no symptoms per se. Um, I mean, I think everyone, especially mm -hmm. after this past year, mm -hmm. has some degree of, of rough days, anxiety and, and whatnot. Uh, but on an ongoing basis, really no, no deep rooted or even surface level symptoms as far as mental health goes uh, that I can really pinpoint to. You're very uh, physically active. Yeah. And you've had some um, head injuries, some concussions. Yeah, uh, most of the concussions are my opinion. They were yeah, not sure. diagnosed, uh, but based off how I felt uh, afterwards, the days after, kind of felt like it might be a concussion. And again, uh, at the time, I really didn't take it as seriously. You know, I was like, oh, it's fine, I have a headache, you know, but there were times that the headache kind of lingered. I've definitely had a uh, couple impact shots okay. to the face. <laughs> okay. What we do here is we do uh, SPECT imaging. And so what SPECT scans look at is the function of the brain. Okay. So we're looking at blood flow. So when you're doing a CT or an MRI, you're looking at the structure. Mm -hmm. So the way to think about SPECT is you've, you've got that structure there, but we want to see what's happening at the activity level, what's happening at the blood flow level. So let's, uh, let's take a look at your brain. Sure. So the first thing that stands out to me and the first thing I really look at when I'm um, looking at brains is I look at the front of the brain. Okay, I look at the prefrontal cortex. Okay. Or we also, that's also known as the frontal lobes. Okay, frontal lobes are important for decision making, for impulse control, for judgment, for forethought, for executive function, so organization and planning. Interesting, okay. okay. Sustaining attention. Your prefrontal cortex, your frontal lobes are working phenomenally. Um, okay. okay, so you're getting great activity. Right, and <laughs> this is our brain sort of CEO, so okay. we want this to really work okay. for us. Um, so many people are sort of struggling with focus, with mood, and, um, and sometimes it can be a frontal lobe issue, and we want to help them with that because if this is not working well for you, this can really impact your life in a variety of ways. If we look back here, so we're looking at the, the back top of the brain here, the parietal lobes, there is some low activity, low blood flow. And this, yeah, that would, would, would that, right this here, sort right? of, yeah, yeah, we call yeah. this, we call this uh, scalloping. So low activity in these areas, you can kind of see it here. So there is some low activity and that's more than likely um, due to hitting your head. You know, your brain, I think what, what really is serving you well is obviously you have a great disposition and, and, <laughs> and part of that comes from just you yeah. inherently, I believe, yeah. but like also that comes from your brain. Your frontal lobes are really working for you. Your temporal lobes have some low activity, and this is common to also see lower blood flow in that area, okay? If it were to be affecting you, it could be you know, long-term memory, but you know, we, we never treat a, a scan, we treat an individual. So that's what For we sure. talk, talk, sure. talk to you, get your history, you know, I'm not gonna say, okay, here's your temporal lobes, low activity, take this, this, and that, right? Uh, it's about, sure. about doing kind of the, the least to get the intended result. 
Now the back of the, uh, this area of the brain, what does that mainly control? And um, where do you see uh, issues with that? If you were coming to me and you were in your like 80s or 90s and you had more decreased activity in there, that area, much more in that area, like literally like holes, I'd be thinking about dementia. Okay. Um, interesting. So okay. it's really important to protect your brain so you can prevent the that, future, yeah. right? That's kind of what the back, the back part kind of governs. Okay. Amongst other things, and I think we should also realize that the brain is very complex. There's a lot of interplay. If someone's coming in with your sort of brain, I would talk about, you know, continuing to exercise, increasing blood flow, getting good sleep, right? So. Um, sleep impacts cerebral function. So when we say cerebral, we think about the cerebral cortex. So getting good sleep improves activity there. I would love to say there's prescribe you this perfect pill, right? I think I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I think you're already doing yeah. things the right way. I think continuing to exercise. If you, one thing that you could consider would be hyperbaric oxygen. I don't know if you've heard of that. I've, I've considered it. Um, yeah. I, I, one of those things I've always wanted to try uh -huh, and I just uh -huh. never got there. I think yeah. because it, it's not in that many places, but it is something I've heard a lot about. I've heard of people coming here as well uh -huh. and then using uh, uh, yeah. the, basically using it for 15 to 20 sessions over time and seeing yeah. immense differences. I've also noticed um, a few people that have used them mm -hmm. happen to sleep like a baby uh -huh. after it for uh -huh. like about a week or so. It really helped their sleep. So there is uh, definite, uh, Upside, yeah. Uh, some, yeah, some upsides for using it yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I think, you know, if you are able to, you have the time, that could be something that could yeah. help your specific brain. Now, what is that going to do as far as, as is it puts blood flow into those areas of the brain that maybe wouldn't be there, like in, in mine, for example, right? Right, right. So you're, you're gonna have, so you have the blood flow and now blood is what carries oxygen to the brain. So when you go into what we call a chamber, these things are called chambers, you're laying down in them and you're going in them for, like you said, 15 to 20 sessions. You're increasing the pressure in the environment, which is gonna drive more oxygen, you know, at a greater rate to these parts of the brain. So you're really bringing, yeah, bringing the blood flow is gonna be bringing the oxygen and that's gonna, can lead, can lead to this improvement. The hyperbaric oxygen chamber is something that I've seen before a lot. I likely am going to start trying to go to, to you know, the, their sessions, I do want to incorporate that because I do think that'll make a pretty big difference. And I personally want to do a little bit more um, to, to try to focus on uh, on, on movement this year because uh, I've definitely had a lot less movement last year. I'm hoping that also helps. As far as supplements, um, what are you uh, normally a fan of in terms of uh, fixing some, some of these problems over time? I'm a big proponent of omega-3. So in kind of the standard American diet or Western diet, we, we kind of he see more of a uh, higher uh, omega-6 to 3 ratio. So more of the inflammatory. Something like 15 to 1 in yeah, some areas, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is pretty crazy. Right. And we like to use a 3 to 2 ratio of EPA to DHA. If we're looking at kind of a blood flow, kind of wanting to increase blood flow, we think think about like ginkgo biloba, vinpocetine, yeah. huperzine A. Okay, yeah. You know, vitamin D levels are really important. If I don't take a decent amount of vitamin D, my levels will always drop in the winter. As soon as I'm not getting that, that everyday yeah. sunlight, Yeah. If I was to use a thousand, two thousand, I use per day in the mm -hmm. winter, I'd have low levels. Right. Yeah. So, so you I, go, I you go to, to five to ten thousand. Five to ten thousand, depending, of course, on on the blood work and the severity of the deficiency. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna look at this scan. So we do a surface scan, and now we do we do all, we all do also what's called an active view. So we were looking at the surface of the brain, and now we want to go a little bit deeper and look at other structures. Okay. And so. What we're doing here is we're looking at the front and back again, you know, the right side, left side, and then a top-down view. Your limbic system is high in activity. People who are very creative, uh, you know, use emotion to kind of drive them high, have a high activity, but also, you know, people who, who kind of struggle sometimes in the winter have high limbic activity. Interesting, okay. okay. So that's interesting that you say that. Yeah. Um, you know, so vitamin D can, can help with that. Um, you know, bright light therapy can also yeah, I, I do have a, a red light uh, device in my okay. house, so I try to use that on days I'm not getting some. I've, I've used a vast majority of supplements for health in general and for, for my brain. 
but they were overall brain supplements looking to do one or two things because I didn't have the test results to actually look at. Now that I have all the results, I can go back and find certain supplements that are again, gonna be customized to my test and try to have those fill in the gaps because they are supplementing what you should already be doing and hopefully they can be icing on the cake. But it's great to see an inside look at everything because uh, this, these are things I've never really thought too much about, the different areas of my brain and what's functioning, why it's functioning and what could be done. I really haven't given much thought to that before yeah. this. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, when your brain's working well, you're working well.